Hello folks, I'm going to give you kind of a rundown on the insulation we've been doing in the cargo trailer. This is a, uh, well I guess it's a 2018 uh, covered wagon brand cargo trailer. Uh, it's uh, steel frame on the bottom with uh, steel beams, steel beams, there's steel stud, that's a uh, channel. And then uh, we got steel supports up top too. I don't know about you all, but uh, when I started thinking about a uh, cargo camper conversion, insulation was my biggest thing that I had to figure out. And I can't even tell you that I figured it out. Uh, I spent countless hours trying to, you know, understand thermal dynamics, I guess you'd say. And for my brain, that was a little hard to compute. But anyhow, we're not completely done, but I want to give you a bit of rundown while it's still kind of naked. So you can see what we have done, why we've done it, where I think I'd do different um, and go from there. So what I will show you here at the back of the trailer where we're not quite done yet. Um, you know, right now, this uh, this metal, the aluminum here, is uh, it's over 100 degrees. It's just morning right now. Um, and the steel channel is about the same temperature. You'll see that we put spray foam insulation, just, you know, the canned great stuff type variety. I will tell you, I tried the Loctite brand, and then I, I tried the Great Stuff brand. Um, stick to the Great Stuff. Um, the Loctite gives you a little bit smaller um, air bubbles, but it is a pain, and you don't get as much of it, and it doesn't expand as well. Uh, maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's a bad thing, I don't know. I didn't like it. So anyhow, you'll see also in here, I have a gap behind my, uh, my channel. For the studs i had to figure out how to get insulation in there so what i decided to do you'll see in my high density foam board i would cut my piece that i needed to the inside width of that channel and then i would also put a slice right down the middle so that i could bend the board bend the high density foam board push it in in a v-shape and then pop it in so that it goes flat and it so it stays in with tension that worked really well um, it's not clean, it's not perfect. You see up there my goofy lines, or I was cutting it with my old school knife. But, uh, and we still have to clean up some areas. Um, you'll also see that I used every bit of foam board I could. We didn't waste, so we took little chunks and pieces and we stuck them in everywhere. And where I needed, where I couldn't slide anything in, I put foam insulation in, like you see there. So we've tried to use everything we can because if you've done any pricing on this high density foam board, um, it's expensive. The, uh, I think the sheet, this is a one inch, this is a one inch sheet, four by eight sheets, and they're like, I think they're $20 a piece, roughly $20 a piece at Home Depot. And yeah, use everything you can. Um, then for the roof, we went with poly ISO. And if you've done any research on that, you found that, uh, you know, they talk about the reflective backing and, you know, that's supposed to reflect heat or reflect, you know, energy. Uh, so I decided to go with that on the roof. Um, I'm not really sure why. I just decided to try that on the roof. And uh, I think by the time I was done the roof is when I decided, I think I want high-density foam board in the walls. Because I just wasn't really that impressed with it. Um, it was kind of, kind of a pain to work with. A little little uh, easier to deal with on the high density foam board and um, but overall you know I got it in I'm gonna need more because it's warm like right now I'm touching it it's quite warm it's probably I would say about 90 degrees you know right now and uh, the steel is probably um, it's, it's probably closer to 100 degrees we're gonna need another layer um, I don't know if I'm going to just go with another layer of uh, the poly iso to try and finish it off uh, because I don't know how thick I want all this to end up being because um, you know we're going to end up putting some sort of cover on it of course uh, poly plywood or, or whatever it's hard to say but anyhow we'll have to figure that out and I'll, I'll update as we go um, and uh, we can go from there I will tell you that um, Areas like this where it's not quite in, you know, not quite staying in place. We'll we'll deal with that too. Not sure how we'll deal with it yet, but we will deal with it. So, um, just so you know, when it comes to the uh, 
spray foam. It, I can't even tell you the difference in temperature. I've got a little thermometer or a little thermal gun and it, the, the metal is right at um, 100 degrees. Now, I can't get temperature read on the foam because the metal's too dang close, but I can tell you that the foam is at least 10 to 15 degrees cooler, at least. I can, I, for the hell of it, I took and I put my lips up to the steel, nice and warm like the, like the trailer had a fever, and this right here was perfect. Uh, it, was, it felt like just a little bit above room temperature, so I didn't mind that at all. Um, up at the front of the trailer in the V, we, or I, decided to go with the poly ISO. Um, it is double layered, and um, so there's, so we got two layers, so it's an inch thick. Um, it just worked better up here. One, because if you see here, I could cut a piece that I needed and then push it in and crumple it in, and it would stay in there with tension. So I'm able to take and, and form that. You see there, it's hard to see on camera, but there's a curve there. Uh, it's a rounded curve, so my V-nose is not a sharp, uh, a sharp angle. It's, it's got a curve at the end before it comes to the straight wall. And that, that actually worked out good. That was where the poly ISO uh, really showed its, uh, its strengths. And you'll see again here, I've got, yeah, I've got little pieces I stuck in there. And that's me using every piece, every little scrap I can. I've actually got a little bucket of scraps. And I will use them every piece I can because, again, it's really expensive. Um, I don't, I'm not mad about how well it insulated with two sheets, um, because the, 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 the wall with the poly ISO with two sheets is actually pretty decent. It's pretty cool. So that means maybe on the roof, I decide to go with, uh, another layer of poly ISO. And that would mean up in here, I'd, I might, uh, cut that foam back and then put, put it flush. I think I kind of, I kind of sprayed that foam in there before I really thought about putting another sheet in there, and that's maybe because I was overestimating the uh, ability of the poly ISO to insulate. Um, and plus, I had also planned on, you know, the fact that I may put another layer of insulation, you know, a flat to the track or flat to the channel, to the steel channel, and uh, and let there be a bit of an air gap in between. Uh, which would also kind of help with insulation. But um, the, the V here, I haven't done anything yet with, and for good reason. I don't, I don't really feel like trying to cut out all these perfect pieces and corners and angles and everything else. Uh, I'll figure it out. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Sorry to have a little epileptic fit here. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll update you on that. Um, as far as the floor... I have not insulated underneath, um, and we're not sure what we're going to do on top. We we will we ins, we will insulate underneath eventually, uh, for sure. I just don't know what and when and how, but we will do it. And since I'm close to here, let me show you my air conditioning setup. Um, I don't know about you all, but whole reason for me and my wife, and I actually had to kind of talk her into it after I thought of the idea, and then I found people. Uh, this is a couple years ago when I bought this, and. I'm really just now getting to the project properly. Um, life took its turns. But anyway, we just really wanted an upgraded tent, essentially. I like camping. I'm not trying to get luxury, but I'm a big guy. I don't want to crawl up off the ground. And, um, and so I want a little bit of comfort, and I don't want to be hot. Um, not from the southeast. I'm, you know, We live in Georgia now, but uh, I don't like humidity. It's the one thing I absolutely despise about the Southeast. Some people love it, I guess, but, uh, you know, maybe they're weird. Anyhow, so I bought a, just had to go portable air conditioner, and the reason is because I didn't feel like taking the side on my trailer and putting, hanging an air conditioner out of it, nor trying to really screw with trying to figure out um, how to make it clean and neat and not look like there's an air conditioner there and have it mostly inside and have it drain properly. Um, because guess what? This guy does the same job, and my hole, I just cut out in the front of the trailer there, and should I decide to put it somewhere else, I can easily put a piece of wood back and seal that hole up, no big deal. 
and we are going to, I will tell you that we we do need to elevate it. We will. I'm going to bring it up about uh, probably two feet, and so that way it blows cool air out over and then sinks down, obviously. But it does a great job. This is just a 8,000 BTU unit that I got from my wife found it at Aldi. 200 bucks. I felt like it was a gamble because sometimes Aldi, you get some pretty awesome stuff, and sometimes they fail. On this one, pretty awesome. And it's been through its paces. We actually have cooled off this trailer with it. Uh, we've sealed it up and cooled it off, and it will do the job. It works hard right now because we still don't have quite enough insulation in it. But it will get it to where you can at least be comfortable in it. But the air conditioner continues to work hard. Um, the other thing that's nice about these is you can just drain them uh, out the back. And uh, I could technically just put a drain hose on the back and let it drain out the bottom of the trailer through a hole if I wanted. But I don't think that's necessary. You just got to drain it once in a while. Um, I think we've used, we've had it running a total of... I don't know, 20 hours maybe, and I just drained it this morning, and uh, <coughs> it maybe had about a cup of water come out of it. So, and this one also has a dehumidification feature on it, so I can just let it run as a dehumidifier. Um, but, you know, of course it's dehumidifying anyway, as an air conditioner. But that being said, it does a good job, works great, and I still can choose to do things different. I can move this to a different area of the trailer for... Me and my wife are actually going to use the trailer before we outfit it. And the reason for that is, what better way to understand how you want to use the space than to get in the space and understand how you, how you move in it, how it feels when you're in it, where you feel like you can picture yourself relaxing if you've got to be in it uh, for long periods of time. Because guess what? You're in the South, it decides to rain. Uh, me and my wife are going to take our first trip in it next week and uh, for five days. And guess what? There's a 40% chance of rain every day. And in Georgia, that can turn into, I don't know, 70 or 100%. And 40% can often be as good as 100% chance of rain. So who knows? Um, so we'll, I'll report back to you after we, uh, after we stay in it, see how well it did, see how the air conditioner did. Uh, I'll give you a little review on the generator we bought. We did... I did tons of research on that, see what generator I might want. So there's a lot of things I can update you on, but I just wanted, well, the stick, well, the well, it was, it's not bare bones right now, but I kind of wanted to give you an, an, a quick understanding of insulation, what we did, how we did, why we did. And, um, so you can kind of see what, uh, what kind of processes we've gone through, why we've done it and what you might do different. You might look at what I've got going on and go, wow, I'd never do that. That's stupid whatever um that's fine because guess what i'm kind of a, a jackass of all trades and uh i just kind of get the job done and i fiddle my way through it and get it done so that's about it for now i can't think of anything else i need to update you on but we'll we'll do some more videos later kind of as the process goes because any of you thinking of uh doing cargo trailer conversions if you're like me and you're not some sort of engineer or super craftsman or anything else you're going to be really wondering how you can do this. I hope I can post some videos through the process that really help you understand you can do this. You don't have to have it perfectly outfitted because, again, up off the ground, nice cool place to stay, nice dry place to stay, not humid or whatever, um, or warm in the winter um, is nice. And I don't have to have luxury. Now, we're going to put a couple luxury items in here, but... Uh, you know, it's not going to be, you know, decked out in the finest craftsmanship of, uh, of cabinets and everything else. Nothing against anyone who does that because everyone feels different. I just, one, I don't have the ability to do that. Two, I don't want to pay anybody to do it. So whatever I do, I'm going to do within my skill level and uh, do what I'm comfortable with. So anyway, that's it for now. And talk to you all later. Take care, YouTube.